In the previous lectures, we've already learned that indexes can help us to get the data faster out of the database and would that increase the performance of our database. We've heard first about the B tree index, which is the default index. So if there's nothing else specified and we just talk about an index, usually we refer to the standard B tree index. And this is a good choice if we have unique columns or at least columns with a very high range of different values. That means a high cardinality in this column. And this is typically something on the surrogate keys and for example also on phone numbers, on maybe addresses, on names if it's a full name, because those are usually very rare in having duplicates. So this is something that can be helpful there. And note also that this B tree index is usually also per default set on our primary key. So we don't always need to explicitly denote this index, but it can be already set up automatically on our primary key. If for example, we have denoted our surrogate key as our primary key in our database, then there will be also usually automatically an index created on this column. Then on the other side, we have the bitmap index, which we've learned has the downside that it is slow in the updating and inserting. But as we are working in a data warehouse, we can very easily live with this downside. And we have the benefit that it's super storage efficient due to saving the row locations in bits. And it is also extremely good in the read performance. And with that being said, we now want to also understand how should we go about creating indexes. The first question is, should we put now, since we have these benefits, an index on every single column in our entire table? So of course the answer to that is no, because we've already seen that those indexes come with a cost. First, because they can really require significant amount of additional storage. And also in the creation and the updating, it is really a bit slower. And that's why also we don't want to go too far into just creating an index for every single column, because this will then also slow our update and our inserts down and all of that needs to be maintained. So that's why we should really think about when we want to use those indexes and we should only use them if they are necessary. That means if we experience slow query performance due to the full table scans, because with these indexes, we have learned that we want to avoid those full table reads. And this brings us to our first guideline and that is small tables don't require any indexes. Because even if we have an index on them, usually the query optimizer is not even using that index or it is not giving any additional benefit in comparison to a full table read. So this is our first guideline to use only these indexes on large tables, especially if we experience a low query performance and we need to filter the data a lot. So with that first rule of thumb that we should only use those indexes for large tables with a low query performance, we then want to ask the question now on which columns should we place an index? And the answer to that is to those columns and also to those tables that also often need to have the data filtered. And then if we, for example, use a filter on, let's say, the customer ID very frequently, and this is a column that is used to just get maybe 10% of the table, then we can place an index on that exact column because this will then help to avoid this full table scan if we only want to retrieve, let's say, 10% of the data. So this is the column that are then the good columns for using an index. And if we now look on our data warehouse specifically, we want to now see on which tables, fact tables, dimension tables, 
we should place our indexes and also what type of indexes should we use. We've already learned that the B3 index is good for our primary keys. And in fact, if we have just set this as a primary key in our database, there will be also automatically usually already set up this index and it will be a B3 index. On the other side though, we also want to consider an index on the foreign key because the foreign key is oftentimes used to filter the data and it's also used to join to different tables. And putting a key on this join column will also increase the performance. That's why we can get additional benefits by placing a bitmap key on our foreign key. Of course, again, it's depending on the cardinality. So if we have a huge range of different values in a huge dimension table, then it could be also more beneficial to use a B3 index. So this is depending on the amount of values. So five different values, of course, or 10 different or 20 or 100, a bitmap key is usually then the better choice. And now on our dimension table, we first have to ask the question, do we really need an index? And the answer to that is it really depends on two things. First of all, on the size of the table. If it's a very small table with let's say a few hundred rows, then we probably don't even need an index. We won't benefit from it. But if we have millions of rows, then we can ask the next question, are there columns that are used a lot in searches to filter the data? And if the answer is yes, we can use either a bitmap key or a B3 index. And which one should we use? This is again depending on the cardinality. If we have only two different values, for example, we have only 10 different categories in our huge dimension table, because we have maybe a lot of subcategories, then in this low cardinality, again, we use bitmap key. But if we have a very high cardinality, we typically benefit more from the B3 index. So these are the very general guidelines that we can use to increase the performance of our data warehouse by using indexes. And in the next lecture, we now quickly also want to see a short demonstration on how we can set up such an index on a specific column in our data warehouse. So that's what we are doing in the next lecture. If we want to place an index on a column in our database, we just have to go to our database management system and set up an index there. So this can be done via the following syntax. Of course, again, this can depend on the database system. Maybe on Microsoft, it's a little bit different than on Oracle or on Postgres, but it is almost the same in all of those types. Again, they also can have different methods for indexes, but these are usually rather small differences. And in the end, they work pretty much in the same way. So for Postgres, we can use this index. So we can use the command create index, the name of the index, and then on which table we want to use that index. So this can be then also optionally specified which method we want to use. And if we don't specify anything, again, the default is the B3 index. And then on which columns do we want to place this index? So this is the syntax. And now let's head over to PG Admin and see how we can set up this index. So first of all, I want to use this query, I want to filter the data based on the customer ID. So we see now we get all of these values and we've seen this took about only 81 milliseconds. And we can now also go and see how the query is retrieved. So we've talked about that there's a query optimizer and we can see how exactly the data is retrieved. So if we click here on explain, we see that there is just a full table scan basically. And we can see that in here that we have a full table scan and we can now set up an index on this column. 
So we say create index. This is the index name on that table. And this is on the column that should have this index. So now if we execute that, we can again get this same query and we see it is already at least a little bit better it's not necessarily getting better as we've mentioned so don't worry if in your case it's not even getting better this is because our table is pretty small and that's why it's not benefiting so much from this index so that's why don't worry if your time is here even a little bit higher this is because our table is not so huge but we've seen in our case we have a very small increase in performance and now we also want to see how the data is now retrieved and now we can see that in here we have now used this index and then afterwards we have retrieved the specific rows that were needed so this is something that we can usually also see in the different database management systems, how the query is retrieved. And oftentimes there's also an internal tool that can be used to help us to tell how we can increase the performance of a specific query. And they can then make suggestions. For example, they can say, if you want to use this query very frequently, you can add an index on that column, for example. So we can also get suggestions with some additional query optimization tools. But this was just supposed to be a very quick demonstration on how an index can be set on a database. Hope it was helpful and see you in the next lecture.